Gemini 1.5 Pro. Welcome to the Sick Podcast. We're talking about business and AI. Uh, my co-host Joe Trinaski is off buying a Hawaiian island. He's a VP Venge. I'm Jordan Thibodeau, M&A professional. We're veteran Googlers. If you like business, AI, and a pinch of comedy, or a dash of comedy, or a dollop of comedy, hit that like and subscribe button. So, big news. Google announced today that they are launching Gemini 1.5. Um, this kind of caught a lot of people off guard because they just launched their Gemini Ultra and other models just a second ago. And so the big news about this one is Gemini 1.5 delivers dramatically enhanced performance. It represents a step change in our approach, building upon research and engineering innovations across nearly every part of our foundational model development infrastructure. It uses a mixture of experts. The first Gemini 1.5 model we're releasing for early testing is 1.5 Pro. Um, the 1.5 Pro comes with a standard 128,000 token context window. Um, but as they rolled out, this thing's going to have a 1 million token context window, which is absolutely bonkers. So uh, here is how it compares Gemini 1.0 Pro 32K, uh, 32,000 uh, token context limit. So basically, look at tokens as for every 1,000 tokens, that equals about 750 words. So GPT-4 Turbo has 128,000 tokens. Claude 2.1 has 200,000 tokens. Gemini 1.5 Pro uh, has about 1 million tokens, which is just absolutely bonkers. Now, what is really interesting about this is they do a test called the needle in the haystack, which basically shows, okay, if we load this sucker up with um, a million tokens, uh, how easily is it able to retrieve what we put into that context window? So if we put million tokens, 750,000 words, how many words is it going to forget? Um, if you take a look at this is uh, Claude 2.1 testing its 200,000 um, token limit right now. And you can see just all the areas where it's missing things. But then you compare it to this Gemini 1.5 Pro, it's saying it recalls 99.7% of what you put in there, which is absolutely bonkers if this is true. Now, you're probably wondering, hey, Jordan, uh, Where's Joe? Why isn't Joe here? Well, got some news for you. Uh, Joe's going to be back here next week. He's a, we, we record three times a week. Uh, but what we're doing right now is we have been focusing on getting speakers to come through, and we are getting Anthony Rapetto to come through uh, next week. He's a mathematician, and back in 2017, he said, hey, mixture of, mixture of experts is going to be the way forward, and it's going to lead to pre- uh, tremendous performance games for large language models. Well, he was about six years ahead of his time, and so we're going to have him on next week, and we're going to talk about Joe and I. We're going to do a deep dive into the technical report with Anthony and Joe so that we can figure out like what's legit, what, what, is, what is great about this announcement, and we can really just dive into the numbers because I got burnt. Well, I didn't get burnt, but uh, the last research report uh, our last technical report Google did for its last Gemini launch. There's a lot of malarkey in here. So me, Joe, and Anthony want to spend time coming through here so you can have the best takes and not the hype and not the doomerism, but a nice even keel uh, uh, look at it. Also, after Anthony, following week, we're going to have one of my colleagues, Matthew Young, who is a Googler. He left Google to start his own AI startup called Dewey. And what they do basically is they're allowing educators to bring large language models to school to help with data analytics. So now a teacher can ask Dewey a question in natural language, like, who are my top performers over this class? What can we do to help out? And Dewey will look through all the great information, see who your top performers are, who is struggling, and what you can do to help them. So he's coming through. And then we are going to have Zach Colas uh, come through. He is a venture capitalist. He um, has great experience investing in startups, but also he has a fantastic Twitter following and has been tweeting a lot about San Francisco and what the city needs to do to turn around. So if you want to ask those folks questions, head over to patreon.com forward slash sick, become a supporter. We are having a supporter drive. We're currently at um, about 53 paid Patreon supporters would like to get to a hundred by the end of the month. And for $5 a month, you will get access to all of our great content. Plus you will get access to three exclusive episodes per week that me and Joe are creating. Um, right now we've created 11 so far and, um, it's a lot of great content. So anyways, let's go back to, uh, this announcement 
and see all the other great things that are happening here. So uh, let's scroll down. Um, so greater context, more helpful capabilities. Through a series of machine learning innovations, we increased 1.5 Pro's context funnel capacity far beyond the original 32,000 tokens for Gemini 1.0. We can now wrap 1 million tokens in production. This means 1.5 Pro can process vast amounts of information in one go, including one hour video, 11 hours of audio, code bases of 30,000 lines of code, and over 700,000 words. In our research, we've also successfully tested up to 10 million tokens. Uh, that is a lot of resources to get that thing going. I wonder how expensive it will be to use this, to use this stuff. Uh, Joe and I have been uh, doing a, reviewing other research on our Patreon channel about um, using other ways of getting around the context limit without going so hardcore of like what Gemini 1.5 Pro is doing here because getting this stuff into production can be quite compute intensive, but maybe they've cracked it. So let's see what this video says, this shows here. This is a demo of long context understanding. An experimental feature in our newest model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. We'll walk through a screen recording of example prompts using a 402 page PDF of the Apollo 11 transcript, which comes out to almost 330,000 tokens. We started by uploading the Apollo PDF into Google AI Studio and asked, find three comedic moments, list quotes from this transcript and emoji. This screen capture is sped up. This timer shows exactly how long it took to process each prompt, and keep in mind that processing times will vary. The model responded with three quotes, like this one from Michael Collins, I'll bet you a cup of coffee on it. If we go back to the transcript, we can see the model found this exact quote and extracted the comedic moment accurately. Then we tested a multimodal prompt. We gave it this drawing of a scene we were thinking of and asked, what moment is this? The model correctly identified it as Neil's first steps on the moon. Notice how we. Okay, you see how they, they played sleight of hand. They're fast forwarding the camera. I hate when they do that shit. Um, they need to stop doing that in their marketing. Just record it processing to be fair. You don't want anyone to accuse you of playing games. We didn't explain what was happening in the drawing. Simple drawings like this are a good way to test if the model can find something based on just a few abstract details. And for the last prompt, we asked the model to cite the time code of this moment in the transcript. Like all generative models, responses like this won't always be perfect. They can sometimes be a digit or two off. But let's look at the model's response here. And when we find this moment in the transcript, we can see that this time code is correct. These are just a few examples of what's possible with a context window of up to 1 million multimodal tokens in Gemini 1.5 Pro. Now, question is like, you're to get those answers you're sitting 15 16 seconds i get that i mean uh, oh no not the other world but question is like what if we did a rag method instead and did embeddings and possibly got an answer faster um and also brute forcing your context window with you know a million tokens is a great way to get your financing and be like ah oh, um you're gonna bankrupt the company uh so we're gonna read the technical report next week but i hope Google came out with some really super snazzy way of making this much more compute, um, uh, making this much more compute friendly and not requiring you to just like completely just YOLO uh, all your money to make this thing work. So um, let's get back to where we were here. Screen, do, 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 share. Cool. Uh, let's watch the next video. So better understanding and reasoning across modalities. This is a demo of long context understanding, an experimental feature in our newest model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. Prompts using a 44 minute Buster Keaton film, which comes out to over 600,000 tokens. In Google AI Studio, we uploaded the video and asked, find the moment when a piece of paper is removed from the person's pocket and tell me some key information on it with the time code. This screen capture is sped up and this timer shows exactly how long it took to process each prompt. And keep in mind that processing times will vary. The model gave us this response, explaining that the piece of paper is a pawn ticket from Goldman and Company pawnbrokers with a date and cost, and it gave us this time code 1201. When we pulled up that time code, we found it was correct. The model had found the exact moment the piece of paper is removed from the person's pocket, and it extracted text accurately. Next, we gave it this drawing of a scene we were thinking of and asked, what is the time code when this happens? All right, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think of some use cases of like just, you know, documentary or something. 
and it's like three hours long. You have a great, um, oh my God, who's the guy who does PBS? Ken Burns documentary. It's like what, nine hours long. And you're like, oh, what was that one scene about what you said about the Civil War and the sharpshooters? And you can run this thing through. Question though is like, how much is that going to cost you? Is that like worth your life savings? If that's the case, then I guess I'll just play it on fast forward, find the scene I need. Let's go back to the this is an example of a multimodal prompt where we combine text and image in our input. The model returned this time code, 1534. We pulled that up and found that it was the correct scene. Like all Now that's really cool. The fact that they drew a picture and then said, hey, in this movie, uh, find the scene. And the th they were able, after a minute of the processing, finding the scene where it's a, it's a, a uh, water tank um, uh, releasing its contents. So. Let's go. Generative back. models. Responses vary and won't always be perfect. But notice how we didn't have to explain what was happening in the drawing. Simple drawings like this are a good way to test if the model can find something based on just a few abstract details, like it did here. These are just a couple examples of what's possible with a context window of up to 1 million multimodal tokens in Gemini 1.5 Pro. Also, maybe it's just not. B, but like, or maybe it's just me, but I'm getting confused with all the different models uh, that Google's putting out right now. I even asked ChatGPT, I was like, um, so look at this press release and um, let's see here. Okay. Look at this press release, which is the one I, I just shared with you and said, hey, um, can you tell me which, which are the most powerful models mentioned in here? And it ranked it by capabilities and said Gemini 1.0. 1.0 Ultra is most powerful, and then there's Gemini 1.5 Pro, and then Gemini 1.5, and then Gemini 1.0 Advanced. Like, it's getting, <laughs> it's getting harder to track already. Like, for for uh, OpenAI, it's like GPT 3.5, GPT 4, GPT 4 Ultra. It's, but it's very easy. This is like there's 1.0 Ultra, 1.5 Pro, 1.0 Advanced. Like, <sighs> like my head explode. But hopefully, they'll get their stuff together. Um, let's continue. Uh, relevant problem solving with longer blocks of code. This is interesting because I look at it as maybe, hey, oh, engineers, let me know what you think. But here's a whole entire, here's a part of our code base. Take a look at it. Is there a ways that you, or do you see any bugs or something that can be ref refractored here? Uh, let us know what you think. Like, I think that would be a possibly cool use case, assuming it can understand, uh, top tier code at the Fang level, which has a lot of technical dependencies and it's super duper complex. So let's watch this. This is a demo of long context understanding, an experimental feature in our newest model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. We'll walk through some example prompts using the 3JS example code, which comes out to over 800,000 tokens. We extracted the code for all of the 3JS examples and put it together into this text file, which we brought into Google AI Studio over here. We asked the model to find three examples for learning about character animation. The model looked across hundreds of examples and picked out these three. One about blending skeletal animations, one about poses, and one about morph targets for facial animations. All good choices based on our prompt. In this test, the model took around 60 seconds to respond to each of these prompts. But keep in mind that latency times might be higher or lower, as this is an experimental feature we're optimizing. Next, we asked, what controls the animations on the littlest Tokyo demo? As you can see here, the model was able to find that demo, and it explained that the animations are embedded within the GLTF model. Next, we wanted to see if it could customize this code for us, so we asked, show me some code to add a slider to control the speed of the animation. Use that kind of GUI the other demos have. This is what it looked like before on the original 3JS site. And here's the modified version. It's the same scene, but it added this little slider to speed up, slow down, or even stop the animation on the fly. It used this GUI library the other demos have, set a parameter called animation speed, and wired it up to the mixer in the scene. Like all generative models, responses aren't always perfect. There's actually not an init function in this demo like there is in most of the others. However, the code it gave us did exactly what we wanted. Next, we tried a multimodal input by giving it a screenshot of one of the demos. We didn't tell it anything about this screenshot and just asked where we could find the code for this demo, seen over here. As you can see, the model was able to look through the hundreds of demos and find the one that matched the image. Next, we asked the model to make a change to the scene, asking, how can I modify the code to make the terrain flatter? The model was able to zero in on one particular function called generate height and showed us the exact line to tweak. Below the code, it clearly explained how the change works. Over here in the updated version, you can see that the terrain is indeed flatter, just like we asked. We tried one more code modification task using this 3D text demo over here. We asked, I'm looking at the text geometry demo and I want to make a few tweaks. How can I change the text to say goldfish and make the mesh materials look really shiny and metallic? You can see the model identified the correct demo and showed the precise lines in it that need to be tweaked. Further down, it explained these material properties, metalness and roughness, and how to change them to get a shiny effect. You can see that it definitely pulled off the task and the text looks a lot shinier now. These are just a couple examples of what's possible with a context window of up to 1 million multimodal tokens in general. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, 
let's go back to the demo here. Okay, enhanced performance. Uh, when tested on comprehensive panel of text code, image audio, and video evaluations, 1.5 Pro outperforms 1.0 Pro on 87% of the benchmarks. We'll get into that next week when we do the technical report. Um, let's see about say anything about cost on here. Early testers can try the 1 million token context window at no cost during the testing period, though they should expect longer latency times with experimental features, significantly improve, improvements in speed, and also on the horizon. Um, so starting today, we're offering limited preview of 1.5 Pro developers and enterprise customers via AI Studio and Vertex Reborn. Okay, so we'd love to hear what y'all uh, think about this. Um, let me know in the comment section for you who've played with it. Uh, it's good to see that Google is producing these models, getting them out there in people's hands. Hopefully, this puts more pressure on OpenAI. And it also makes me wonder if Sam wasn't dealing with the board drama, if he could do what he wanted to do and start training GPT-5 earlier, because that's what I suspect he wanted to do, because this last last year he was focusing on drama of people thinking, oh, the, G the GPTs are going to lead to like... AI, uh, AGI 2024, and all that's a bunch of malarkey. Uh, QSTAR is going to take over everything. If he didn't have to deal with those internal kooks on the board, I suspect they would have started training GPT-5 way earlier, and they probably would have been releasing it now. Um, instead, here's Google releasing all these great models, which are some are just barely better than GPT-4 at this point, which was GPT-4 was finished training in... Um, 2022 uh, midsummer. So I'm wondering, like, is OpenAI, like, do they kind of blow the lead because of all the drama internally? And hopefully they can get GPT 5 out sooner and clap back to what's going on here with Google. Anyways, let me know what you all think. Also, trying to hit uh, 100 paid Patreon members by the end of this month. Um, so if you can, patreon.com forward slash sick. We got 11 um, Patreon exclusive episodes on there for five bucks a month to get access to it. And we release three exclusive episodes per week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'll talk to you later. Peace.